Hi there, hope you're having a pleasant day wherever you may be. Today marks the first time I've ever visited this national park, but it's the third time I've been here. I'm at White Sands National Park in southern New Mexico. White Sands National Park is located in southern New Mexico, about 50 miles from Las Cruces and just a few miles away from Alamo Gordo. In 1933, this was designated as a national monument, and then recently in 2019, it was upgraded to National Park. Uh, however, most of the signage, like on the roads and even at the visitor center, still says National Monument, so I'm sure it'll take some time. So for those of you that have been playing along at home, you might remember that I have been here a couple of times prior. Once was for my New Mexico Discoveries and Detonations video, and the other was just a random stop. I was in the area, it was really windy, and I just kind of wanted to document it. Um, if you want to check out either one of those videos, go right ahead, but what are you saving get back to this one? So what exactly is going on here? Why are these white sand dunes here? Well, these are sort of the indirect descendants of an ancient sea. What happened was the sea dried up and left large deposits. Those deposits were forced upward through geologic activity to form the nearby mountains. Water would then dissolve that, that rock and it would flow into this valley, eventually evaporate, and leave these large gypsum deposits. Another interesting fact is that White Sands is composed of gypsum, and gypsum dunes are fairly rare in the world. Um, and of those few that there are, White Sands is the largest. So, um, nice little tidbit of trivia for you. When it comes to plant life in the dunes, this is a very difficult uh, environment to grow in. It's constantly changing, ever evolving. So the plants that do thrive here tend to have certain characteristics that help that, like the soap tree yucca, which grows very fast and grows very tall, so um, doesn't give the sand a chance to bury it. Or the alternative is the skunk bush, which plants really deep roots and basically just claims a chunk of sand and just says, nope, I'm not moving. You know, two very different solutions to the problem. They both thrive here. When it comes to animals here, you're probably not going to see very many because most of the animals that live here tend to be nocturnal, which helps them a lot, especially in the summertime when it gets really hot here. Um, so you won't necessarily see the animals, but you may see their tracks. Um, I know I've seen a couple that look like they must have been from a kit fox, at least based off the diagram that I saw. That's what they seem to appear. However, the most common track you'll probably see are human tracks. <laughs> As far as visiting here, um, it's very simple. It's not too far from Las Cruces, very close to Alamo Gordo. Um, and the park itself is not terribly large in terms of what we can access as a general public. Uh, there's one road that kind of just is an out and back. It's like eight miles or so. Um, along that road, there are tons of little places to pull out. Some of them are named, some of them are trails. Um, but it's just a lot of places just give you access to the dunes. Um, it's almost something of a free-for-all really. As far as trails, there are a few of them here um, of varying difficulties. Um, a lot of the difficulty stems from the walking on the sand because you're kind of going up and down dunes and things like that. So um, that in itself is kind of tiring. When you're on the trails, there's really no walkway for the most part. You're really just looking for trail markers, um, which you do want to make sure that you see the trail markers because it's very easy to get disoriented here. Um, all the dunes look alike, even if you think you know where you're going. And then don't follow your footprints because it's so windy here that footprints can get washed away pretty quickly. Sometimes you almost feel guilty breaking up some of these pristine ripples as you walk up the dunes, but then you just gotta remind yourself, if I give it enough time, they'll come back. There are also a handful of places uh, for picnic areas and things like that um, that have shelter, uh, tables with shelters on them. Um, and also as far as restrooms, uh, just keep in mind that all the restrooms out on the road are uh, pit toilets, full toilets. Um, I can only imagine what a nightmare it would be to try to install plumbing out here, so they didn't even try. Uh, so what if you want to visit the dunes and see them up close, but you're mobility impaired, or you're just not in great shape, or you just don't like sand? You can check out the Inner Dune Boardwalk, which uh, gets you up close, gives you some things to read, explains things, and it's all flat on a boardwalk. It's really easy and uh, gives you a good idea of what the dunes are all about. And like I said before, a real popular activity here is sledding, uh, which apparently they sell sleds at the gift shop. And uh, I see a lot of people doing it. It looks like a lot of fun. Um, and it's usually a lot of families and stuff doing it, so I don't have a lot of footage because I don't want to go get creep uh, recording a bunch of kids slide down a hill, but you get the idea. <laughs> when it comes to White Sands National Park, I really don't know how to sell it because what it boils down to is essentially nothing. There's nothing here. It's just sand. But when you get here, it just sucks you in. 
Well, that does it for this one. Thanks for joining me on this return visit to White Sands National Park. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. hope you found it interesting. And I really, really hope it encourages you to come check this out. White Sands, gorgeous. Put it on your list. With that said, I guess I'll see you on the next one. That didn't work. <laughs>